Hey guys, today on Absolute Aquatics, I'm going to be putting this extension cord to my power supply so that I can run all the equipment on this aquarium, like currently right now. The heater isn't plugged in because the heater cord can't reach the power strip that I have. So that's what this is for, to put the power strip closer. And I'm also going to hook up the CO2 and so yeah, just kind of a mini vlog today. And I'm sorry that the video didn't come out on Tuesday. It was really busy this week. Alright guys, so here's the tank. And this is what I was talking about. So behind the couch, the couch is usually up to here. That is the power strip here. Bought that extension cord so I can put it back behind the tank over here. Then the cords won't be coming out from in front of this. And they'll be in the back. And so that's what I want, and that's what I'm going to do today. And then I can hang this up how it's supposed to be. This front panel of the stand is actually supposed to be up as high as this, so that it has a nice look where you don't really see the rim of the tank. Alright guys, so it's a little bit later. I've got the tank running, obviously. And I've got everything in the sump running. As you can see, there's a blue light in there. That is my Fluval E100. It's showing blue right now because the water is still colder than what I have the temperature set on that heater. And the reason it's able to plug in is because I got this extension cord that goes to the power block over there, the surge protector, power strip, whatever you want to call it. And so now I'm going to add something else to the power strip. I'm going to get my CO2 system and I'm going to hook it up into this tank because. This is my display tank, I want it to look nice, plus it'll also help with the algae control a little bit. And so now we're going to head over to the fish room to get that, and while I'm there I'll feed the fish. I guess it's a little later than I thought, so all the automatic lights have already turned off, so we'll just feed Sabrina. Alright, so here in front of me I've got my CO2 system, CO2 tank, solenoid, bubble drop, or bubble counter, CO2 proof line, my diffuser, that metal thing, and of course a timer to turn it off and on. I'm going to run this CO2 running probably only for an hour at the beginning of every day, and I'll probably have it bubble maybe just a little bit faster than a bubble a second. Alright guys, so this is how many bubbles per second I'll be running. If you feel like counting, you can. And it's putting out a pretty good flow. I'm going to adjust it a little bit so it's going right in front of that outflow there. So that just stays in the water and gets mixed up a little better. And hopefully it'll help get rid of this algae. As you can see, I had to scrape the glass once, you can see where I missed a little bit. And that's what it looked like before I scraped it. But yeah, so that's what I'm going to do now. Alright guys, so we got the CO2 stuffed over here. I should probably figure out a way to secure it better, but I'm pretty confident that it's not going to tip over and nothing's going to happen to it over here. I also put this piece of wood up there to get that that um, water pump or that air pump up there instead of sitting right here still still running cold let's see what it's at 72 so it's probably getting close to what I have set at but I definitely have it set higher than 75 um let's see Fuval 3.0 is starting to turn off I moved that a little bit so it's just in for sitting right in front of the where the water blows out of that output and now I'm going to put some screws into here so that I can hang this board here. Well, we got we got Reggie and Sophie here. We got everything done that we were doing today. It wasn't a lot, but we got that extension cord put in. We got the CO2 set up, and I got this board hung up. It looks a little weird right now but that's because I didn't want to try to move the tank with it full of water but when I do a water change I will pull it up to this front right corner so it's just right tight in there and it'll look nice 
and you won't see the rim. It'll basically look like the well, the stand will cover the rim. I like it like that. It'll look nice. I'll take just a permanent, like a sharpie or something, and I'll write on that wood where I drilled the holes. And this, I actually pull it right off, as you can see, because I drilled a hole, and then just set it right back on top of that nail. So that's removable, so I can get to the sump. Alright guys, so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a little weird, short, and obviously on the wrong day. Um, I'm definitely going to try harder to make sure I get a video, guys, video out on Tuesday next week. And I believe it will also be on this setup, so if you're enjoying this setup that I've got in, this, in my living room here, um, definitely make sure you check that out. It's also good for people with fish rooms and just any aquarium. It's a very useful video, so make sure if you're not subscribed, subscribe so you see that. Also hit that like button, and I want in the comment section, I want you guys to comment your guys' fish that you think I'm putting in this aquarium. And I want you to comment your favorite um, YouTuber with less than 5,000 subscribers, not me or yourself. And I want to comment, I want you to comment your favorite fish. Alright, thank you guys for watching.